Hi guys! Today is another television review of a show that I watched over the past week and just fell completely head over heels in love with and I had to talk about it. This is a review of the Netflix original show The OA which launched on Netflix earlier in 2017 and I finally got around to watching it and I have a lot of feelings. So for the first half of this review I'm going to keep it spoiler free and then I'm going to go into a little bit more detail at which point I will give you lots of warning and there will be a cut so you'll know exactly when to leave if you haven't watched it yet but I just wanted to give a bit of an overview for anyone who has not watched it yet and who maybe wants to see it and then in the next bit then I will talk to people who have seen it who want to hopefully rave about it as much as I do. So this is a sort of sci-fi genre of show which I will say straight off the bat is not going to be everyone's cup of tea. So do go in with an open mind but I would totally understand why it might not be for you. The basic premise of the story is that in the first episode there's a girl um, who's sort of running around in the middle of the traffic and she jumps off a, she jumps off a bridge basically. It looks like she's trying to kill herself and the next scene is her in the hospital. So she survived this incident um, and she's in the hospital and they're trying to figure out who she is and it transpires that she is a girl who went missing seven years ago and this is her just reappeared. No one knows where she's been. She refuses to talk about where she's been or what happened to her while she was away and eventually when she's reunited with her parents it transpires that before she went missing she was blind and now that she's back she's not. Basically it's eight episodes worth, the first five episodes are an hour long each and then the next three episodes after that are about 40 to 50 minutes and it's a story exploring what happened to this girl when she went missing. It's really difficult to explain this show without giving anything away. It's exploring what happened to this girl while she was away, where she was, who she was with and the experiences that she had through that. It explores life and death and the kind of blurring lines between the two and all I will say at this point is that it is one of the most imaginative and beautiful shows that I have watched in a really long time. Kristen Bell, who is one of my favourite human beings, tweeted about this. So I'd watched the first five minutes a few weeks ago just after it got uploaded onto Netflix but I was in the middle of something else and I thought this looks okay but I'll come back to it and then I saw Kristen Bell had tweeted saying that the OA was her, like the most incredible show that she'd seen in a long time, that it had awoken things inside her that she'd never imagined before and she basically just raved about it and because I love her and I trust her judgement I thought right I've got to go back and give this a shot and I could not agree more. So whatever you have heard, because I know that you may have heard some stuff on Twitter about it because a lot of people were tweeting about it for a while, I would say give it a shot, please give it a shot if you don't like it and give it a shot until you get through the first episode because the first episode is really setting everything up and then once you get through that and get into the next one that's when you really start getting into the kind of the real depth of the story. It's so beautifully shot and there's just some moments in it that I just want to screenshot and blow up into a poster and have it on my wall forever because visually it's just spectacular but even more so than the stunning visuals the way that it makes you think and the imagination that has gone into the writing of this show just speaks to me and as I say it, it, I think it's one of these things that you'll either watch and go this is so stupid and ridiculous and I what on earth is going on here I can't get on board with this at all or you'll watch it and like me and Kiss and Bell, you will fall head over heels in love with it. They have just announced that they're going to do a season two which I am so excited about. I'm so delighted that they're going to do a season two because it deserves it and I love these characters and I want to spend more time in their world and exploring what else this show has to offer because if it's anything like season one it's going to be something really special. So I'm going to leave it there for those of you who have not seen the show. If you haven't seen the show yet but you're thinking you're going to watch it, give this video a thumbs up to let me know. Go away and watch it and then come back and let me know what you think. But now I'm going to go into spoiler territory so you're probably going to want to switch off in three, two, one, go. Hi there, so if you've stuck around it means that you have watched season one of the OE and hopefully you're as excited about it as I am. If you're not though, please don't worry, I love to hear different people's opinions and feelings on these things so if you didn't enjoy it or you thought it was ridiculous you can feel free to let me know that in the comments down below. I won't be offended because it, you know nothing's going to be everyone's cup of tea but I think this is going to be a particularly um, 
a particularly love-hate one. I have to say that I'd, one of the things that slightly put me off watching it was that I'd seen quite a lot of people tweeting saying, oh, the ending was really annoying or what was that ending all about? And I always hate that because I think if you've invested a lot of time in a show and then it's a disappointing ending, it's really frustrating. But then when I saw people like Chris and Belle saying how incredible it was, I thought, right, I'll get on board, I'll watch it and at least I'm prepared for a bad ending. I didn't think it was a bad ending at all though. I thought it was a beautiful ending and actually, I think because they're doing a season two and they've announced that now, it probably makes a lot more sense. If they hadn't announced that they were doing a season two before you watched it, you probably would think like, that's a massive cliffhanger and they've just left me there. But I can't wait to see what is going to happen when we meet Oli in the next season in wherever it is that she is. And then also see what is going to happen for Steve and the rest of them because they've now been left there and presumably they're going to want to try to get to wherever she is or at least Steve is. That moment at the end when he was chasing the ambulance and shouting, take me with you. <sighs> It just broke my heart. It's really unbelievable how quickly a story like this can kind of burrow its way into you and you just desperately want to believe it because in the finale, when Alfonso was in her room and took the box out and found the books, I was heartbroken. And like, I genuinely, like, I feel like I felt exactly like he did that, that he, he found these books and he's reading it and going, oh my god, this has just been a story she's made up in her head and like we've fallen for it hook, line and sinker and you know, we've been doing all these movements to open up another realm and it's just been her trauma creating like a nice story to cover it up. And I couldn't bear it, I was so devastated because I think when you're watching something like this and it's, and it's something that you get on board with, you just desperately do want to believe it and you want to believe that these movements really could open up this other portal. I love alternate universe stuff and time travel and that kind of sci-fi sort of genre is really up my street. I'm a huge fan of it. If you've watched my videos for a while you probably know that I've talked about that before but alternate universe, parallel universe, sort of multiverse stuff where all the universes are piled on top of each other and they're just you know out of reach. I'm obsessed with that and so the fact that that's what this was kind of reaching at just totally captivated me. It was just so stunning and the moments when Oi was, I'm calling her Oi rather than Prairie because I like that that's who she is and I love the idea of them being angels and her being the original angel and and everything from her her childhood in Russia and those scenes in the bus when she was drowning. So the minute that she was having these near-death experiences, the, the first time we were introduced to that where she kind of woke up after she was drowning and she was in this place, like, I'd, I'd known that I really liked it before that, but that moment where you saw it and it was just this glittering space um, that she was in, I just, I lost it at that point. I was like, this is the most beautiful thing that I've seen in I don't know how long. And oh, the, the, the sheer level of creativity and imagination that went into that just blows my mind. Also, I think that the way that they wrote the characters was incredibly clever because with most of them, like with Betty and with Steve, you kind of were introduced to them to begin with as, particularly with Steve, as quite an antagonistic character. He was very angry, he did a lot of things that were wrong. And in the first episode, I was like, I do not like this guy. He needs to sort himself out, this is ridiculous. And by the end, you just feel so sorry for him. And when he's getting carted off to that, you know, military school or whatever, you're desperate for him to get saved and you're desperate for something to happen and see when Betty, I'm all over the place here, I'm just, I'm just going for it, but when Betty gave that $50,000 to those men to get him back because it was more important to her to have him safe and not taken away to this place when in the first episode she just genuinely couldn't care less and she was like, he's causing trouble in my class, my other students can't concentrate, get rid of him and by by this, by the last episode, she was willing to give up her inheritance from her brother to stop him being taken away and... Oh, it was just beautiful. Jason Isaacs was fantastic. I really, really enjoyed his performance and again, the really interesting thing about that was that obviously he was doing something terrible and for most of the time you were totally against him, but there were these tiny little moments where you just felt sorry for him, like where you saw that he'd become so obsessed with this work and so obsessed with this idea of figuring out what comes after death or what these people who've had these near-death experiences are going through and are capable of 
that he's lost sight of all rea level of reality. Like, these are people who are in a basement who've been kidnapped, who are practicing movements that they've seen in a vision while they've technically been dead to open up a parallel universe. And technically they've got a stronger grasp on reality, I think, than he does. So that's saying something. There were just these moments where he was talking to Prairie and saying, you know, I see us as collaborators and like you're as much a, a point, a, a part of the process as I am and all that. And you sort of went, oh, you, you don't have, there's nothing in your life other than this. And the scene in the last episode or the second last episode where he killed, ended up accidentally killing the, the other scientist who'd been his sort of mentor. And, and just these messes that he got himself into and this obsessive g desperation to be the one that, that finds this out and figures it all out. Just there were moments where you were sort of like, oh, wow, you are just totally lost from reality. However, obviously, more importantly, he kidnapped several people and locked them in his basement. So what I really want in the next season I need to figure out in the next season because I'm assuming what he, his plan was was to take away his place in the, in the group of five, do the movements, open up the portal and get into the next realm. So I'm assuming, is he going to be there when, when they get there? I don't know. We'll, we'll, we'll soon see, I suppose. But I am very excited to see what happens with him in the next season because he needs to get his comeuppance surely at some point. I really loved the relationship between Homer and Oe. I loved that they developed, they, they formed this bond and they fell in love and, and they had that connection and it was all through glass. I've got a, a thing about, there's one of my favourite scenes in anything ever and I'm, I, I feel bad to say this in case anyone hasn't seen this but um, there's an episode of Lost where um, Jack and Kate are having a conversation through a piece of glass and it's one of, if you know what I'm talking about, let me know in the comments down below, but um, it's in season three, episode four, I think. Um, start of season three anyway, and it's one of my favorite scenes in anything ever because there's something so interesting about people having a really important heart to heart conversation that, and they're not able to actually connect, they're not able to touch, they're, they're saying it through glass and there's that level of like separation that that they're talking to each other about something hugely important and hugely emotional but they're they're kept apart. I think there's something really interesting about that and, and so the, the Homer and Prairie or Homer and Oe relationship kept giving me flashbacks to that scene and that scene just is something that I love and so I really enjoyed the fact that as heartbreaking as it was that they were able to form that trust and that bond and that connection just through a sheet of glass so yeah I thought that was lovely. The ending I just loved. I thought the the high school shooting thing was not only very apt because obviously gun violence is a really big topic that we need to keep looking at and the access that that people have and young people have to getting guns and how easily that can happen is obviously a really topical issue and so that was interesting that that was the route that they chose to go down but I also think that they did it so beautifully in that the moment where she'd, when she'd been talking to her, her FBI counsellor and saying that it was like a, a big open space with lots of glass and that she could hear cutlery clinking and stuff and you didn't, well at that point I certainly didn't ever click that it, that it would be the high school canteen even though we'd been in there several times, there were several scenes shot in there it never occurred to me that that, like, that just wouldn't dawn on you because it's a space that Prairie hasn't really been in and so you're thinking of some weird places that she's been um, and so that moment where you saw her sort of clicking and saying to her dad when she was in the bath and she, she had the, the other vision and she's telling her dad that she knows what it is now and then you're seeing the kids in the cafeteria and all the glass and that just unsettled moment where you're like, oh my God, it's something that's going to happen there. For me, for some reason, I thought it was going to be like an explosion or something. I don't know where I got that from, but that's just what kind of came to me. So as she's running towards it, like I've watched the last scene a few times now because I just thought it was so incredibly beautiful. Um, and, and again, as I say, I think if you aren't really on board with the, if you don't just embrace it and go, do you know what, I'm totally here for this and I'm, I believe in this, then you probably would think it was a bit ridiculous. But just seeing them all having that moment where they looked at each other and they were like, we've got to do this now, like, we've got to try. 
I'm getting up and risking that. I feel like I'm gonna cry. Like, oh, like they they got up and they risked that. And and she like Betty came back. She was about to leave and she came back and she's going on oh, my bodies. I can't leave them. Oh, it was just so beautiful. I love the character of Buck. I love that they have a, they had a trans kid in as one of their main characters. That I think is so incredibly important. What I thought was really nice about it was that they didn't make it like a, a big thing. It was just. It was just sort of weaved in there that there were a couple of moments where you heard his dad calling him Michelle and then you heard his mum and dad having a conversation about pronouns and whether they should be referring to Buck as he or she and having a disagreement over that and the dad obviously not being, from the sounds of things, particularly supportive but I just really enjoyed that other than that it, it wasn't really a massive focus and at school it didn't seem to be a huge focus which I thought was really really good and very important. But yeah that, that final scene just got me and as I say I've watched it a few times now because I just think it's incredible. So yeah I've talked for a long time and I'm going to stop now because I could talk about this for a lot longer but I would love to know your thoughts. Let me know in the comments down below what you thought of the OE, how you felt about the, like Brett Marling was just stunning. Let me know what you thought of her performance. Loved it, loved it. So many good positive thoughts. Let me know in the comments down below how you felt about this show. If you didn't like it, as I say, please feel free to let me know because I love to have a good old debate about these things and everyone has different opinions. But if you loved it as much as I did, I would love to hear from you. Thank you so much for watching guys. I hope that you're doing really well and I will speak to you again soon. Bye.